All right, y'all, so on today's Motivation Monday, we're covering Mel Robbins. Mel Robbins is a very well-known CNN commentator, TV show host, author, and a very outspoken motivational speaker. She's well-known for her coverage of the George Zimmerman trial, her TEDx talk, and then her book, The Five Second Rule. If you don't know who Mel Robbins is, She's pretty outspoken, a very, very motivational individual. So today, we're gonna cover her rules for success. Before we get into it, make sure to go ahead and smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you guys have already been following Mel Robbins, leave a comment down below. What is your favorite rule of success that you've been following from her? All right, so first, know what you want and listen to your gut. When I was 22, right after I graduated from Dartmouth, I was so focused on making everyone happy that I almost chose the worst possible career for my personality. It's not a bad career, it just would have been horrendous for me. I was interested in the environment, so I decided, oh, you know, I'll go get a law degree, and then I'll go work in Washington, and I think maybe I'll work on environmental policy, and I'd probably end up in some cube farm. And everyone was thrilled with the plan. Everyone, it turns out, but me. So here I am, I'm driving a U-Haul across country to go to law school and to get a degree in environmental law. And something started to gnaw at me. And with every single mile that I drove, my thoughts were getting louder and doubts were starting to pour in. My gut was telling me, Mel, turn the damn U-Haul around. But the problem was that everything was already in place, right? I mean, I'm already in the U-Haul. The thing is already packed. I'm already 10 miles into my drive. Um, the tuition had been paid for the first semester. I had signed a lease. I mean, I could not undo these things. Isn't that why it's so difficult for you to make changes in your life? Because you think that things can't be undone? The fact is, any excuse that you come up with, you can undo. Tuition can be reimbursed, apartments can be leased, plan B can be invented. So I got up, I repacked that U-Haul, and I drove out of town. I let myself make a U-turn in life. If you ever find your gut battling your head, save yourself the drama. I guarantee you, your gut is right. Guarantee you, your excuses can be undone. And I guarantee you, you can make a U-turn in your life right now if you want to. Number two, follow your curiosity. And your curiosity and the things that you're naturally drawn toward, that's the guide. If you could spend hours singing, if you could spend hours baking, if you could spend hours writing, if you could spend hours learning code, that's a huge signal that that's something that you're really innately interested in. And so if you're curious about something, if you notice that you daydream about being a writer, if you notice that you daydream about starting a tech company, if you notice you daydream about building bridges, follow your curiosity. And you can do that a number of ways. First of all, Google it. There are millions and millions of pages out there on the web that are related to what you're interested in. Secondly, find an online course. Most of the major universities are offering their courses online for free. Third, buy a book about it. Put yourself in a collision course with the thing that you're curious about, and you will get closer and closer and closer to figuring it out. Three, don't give up on your dreams. Every single morning, Monday through Fridays at 9 a.m., I host a live call-in radio show on Sirius Satellite Radio. It's called Make It Happen with Mel Robbins. And the thing that's been so crazy about that show is every single person that calls me on that show, they call in because they're feeling stuck in their lives and they're resigned about their ability to change their lives. And I'm not talking about people that are nuts. I'm talking about successful people like you and me that just somehow got stuck in their lives. And I'm not talking about people that are looking for cheesy self-help. I'm talking about people that really want to figure out how to move themselves forward. And you know, I find that so many of us think that our dreams are unreachable or unrealistic, and it's just so sad. I mean, people think that their dreams disappear. And if that's what you think, congratulations, you're officially stuck. And the truth is that our dreams are always there and they don't ever give up on us, we give up on them. But here's the secret. If you just force yourself, and I mean force, because I know damn well none of you want to do anything about this, and I also know you're sitting there like, yeah, this self-help crap, this isn't for me. But if you just force yourself to take a couple small steps, there's always a surprise. 
There's always a surprise waiting. If you take a step off the porch, there's a starry sky. There's a great new business venture. There's the marriage and the juicy sex partner that you wanted. There's whatever you could possibly imagine. So I want you to think about what are your dreams? Four, you have to take action. And you have these incredible ideas and what you think is missing is motivation. And that's not true. Because the way that our minds are wired and the fact about human beings is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things because our brains are trying to keep us alive. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary, which sets up this problem for all of us. You're never going to feel like it. Motivation's garbage. You, you only feel motivated to do the things that are easy, right? What do you think that is? Oh, I know exactly why that is. Because I, I, I've studied this so much because for me, one of the hardest things to figure out was why is it so hard to do the little things that would improve my life? And what I've come to realize and what we'll talk a lot about today is that the way that our minds are designed is our minds are designed to stop you at all costs from doing anything that might hurt you. Mm -hmm. And the way that, 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 that this all happens is it all starts with something super subtle that none of us ever catch. And that is with this habit that all of us have that nobody's talking about. We all have a habit of hesitating. Mm. We have an idea, you're sitting in a meeting, you have this incredible idea, and instead of just, you know, saying it, you stop and you hesitate. Now what none of us realize is that when you hesitate, just that moment, that micro moment, that small hesitation, it sends a stress signal to your brain. It wakes your brain up and your brain all of a sudden goes, oh, oh wait a minute, wait, wait. Why is he hesitating? He didn't hesitate when he put on his killer spiky sneakers. He didn't hesitate with the uh, really cool track pants. He didn't hesitate with the NASA t-shirt. Now he's hesitating to talk, something must be up. So then your brain goes to work to protect you. It has a million different ways to protect you. One of them is called the spotlight effect. It's a known phenomenon where your brain magnifies risk. Why? To pull you away from something that it perceives to be a problem. And so you can truly trace every single problem or complaint in your life to silence and hesitation. Those are decisions. And what I do and what's changed my life is waking up and realizing that motivation's garbage. I'm never going to feel like doing the things that are tough or difficult or uncertain or scary or new. So I need to stop waiting until I feel like it. And number two, I am one decision away from a totally different marriage a totally different life, a totally different job, a totally different income, a totally different uh, relationship with my kids. Not like one decision I'm divorcing you in, in the marriage example, but one decision on, you know, you could be having a conversation with your spouse and you feel your emotions rise up and within a tiny window, those emotions can take over and can impact how your marriage goes. or you can learn how to take control of that micro moment and make a decision to act in a way that actually shifts your marriage. Your life comes down to your decisions and if you change your decisions, you will change everything. Five, continually push yourself to the next level. You tend to think that what you want, you just march right towards it. But if in sports, you march right towards the goal, what happens? The defenders come in. And what the defenders are is it's your brain saying, ain't gonna happen. So the second you start moving toward that thing you want, be ready. You're gonna tell yourself you don't feel like it. You're gonna have to force yourself. It's happening. There's no way to get around it. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna basically get bounced around a lot. All over the place. And there are gonna be a lot of times that you feel like this was a really dumb idea to start this business because it's gonna get hard. And I wanna remind you about something. Unlike a sports field where there's an in and out of bounds, the great thing about life is there actually aren't any. And it's usually in those moments where you feel like you can't do it, 
that you're closer than ever to having everything that you wanted. And I wanted to show you this so that you keep it in mind, because I think a lot of times when you look back, it's the darkest moments where you realize, holy cow, that's what projected me forward. Six, always focus on thinking positively. What about when someone can't realize or identify their own negative feelings? Someone that has been conditioned to live in negative feelings and believes that that's normal. This question comes from Basso Anna Denegada. Um, it is your normal. You're right. It's a really, um, first of all, I'm sorry that that's been your experience of life because that really stinks and it doesn't have to be that way. But here, here's where I want you to go. What's interesting about what you said is the fact that these feelings are normal, okay? Normal just means you're used to them, but you don't have to live with them. So even though you're so used to these negative feelings and these feelings of doubt, you still don't like them you still have the ability to stop that. So I want you to think of a moment in time when you were really happy. Like it could be a memory from being little, it could be something that you dream of doing. And I want you to come up with something really specific about that moment, okay? Like think about what you were wearing or think about the, 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 the blue sky. That is gonna be what I call your anchor thought. Every time from this moment forward that you wake up or you find yourself drifting to those normal feelings of, I'm a loser, I'm worthless, I'm never gonna find love. They may be things that you're used to thinking, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter because you can change them. The second that you feel that, you've drifted over into that thought, and I keep coming over here because when you start using the rule, you're gonna start to literally feel which part of your mind you're using. The worries kinda happen here. <clears throat> I want you to five, four, three, two, one, and then I want you to insert this vision of yourself, this vision of yourself where you felt really good. And if you can't think of one, invent one. How would you feel if you were in love? How would you feel if you loved yourself? How would you feel if you did that thing that you're scared of, that you keep talking yourself out of? That's your anchor thought. Now, when you first start using the rule, particularly when you're breaking a habit, a habit of thinking negative thoughts, when you first start doing it, you may need to use the five second rule 73 times in one day. That's okay. I had to do it like that when I was first using the rule to cure myself of anxiety. When I would start to worry about anything, I'd start to worry about you know my kids or I'd start to worry about money and I'd feel my thoughts drift and then I'd start to feel my heart race. I would stabilize my thoughts, five, four, three, two, one. I'd activate my prefrontal cortex, lower the, the worries you know, on the other side. And then I would start to think about something that actually made me feel really calm or excited. That is the battle of your mind. And you know, the other thing about normal that I just wanna say is that the reason why it feels normal to doubt yourself and to have low self-worth is because you've thought this so long. It's become a pattern, just like chewing your nails becomes a pattern of behavior that you don't think about. Well, the cool thing is, is that based on science, you can actually change any pattern, even a thinking one. So use the five second rule. Every single time you catch yourself thinking the nasty stuff and then activate your prefrontal cortex and force yourself to think something positive. Seven. You have to be honest with yourself. We live in the most amazing moment in time. So that thing that you have up here, whatever it may be, you wanna use healthy eating to cure your diabetes, you wanna figure out how to take care of uh, the elders and start a new hospice center, you wanna move to Africa and build a school, guess what? You could walk into a bookstore right now and buy at least 10 books written by credentialed experts on how the hell you do it. You could Google it, and you could probably find at least, I don't know, a thousand blogs documenting the step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step transformation that somebody else is already doing. You can find anybody online and cyberstalk them. <laughs> you can just walk in their footsteps and let them, you know, just use the science of drafting. Follow what everyone else has done, because somebody else is already doing it. So why don't you have what you want?
When you have all the information that you need, you have the contacts that you need, there are probably free tools online that allow you to start a business or join a group or do whatever the heck you want. It all comes down to one word. Shut the front door, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the F-bomb. It's everywhere. You hear it all the time, and I, I honestly don't understand what the appeal is of the word. I mean, you don't sound smart when you say it. And it's really not expressing how you really feel. It's sort of a cheap, you know, shot to take. And of course, you know, I'm talking about the word fine. <laughs> how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, really? You are? Dragging around those extra 40 pounds, you're fine. Feeling like roommates with your spouse, and you're fine. You haven't had sex in four months, you're fine. Really? I don't think so. But see, here's the deal with saying that you're fine. It's actually genius. Because if you're fine, you don't have to do anything about it. But when you think about this word fine, it just makes me so angry. I mean, here we are at a conference about being alive, and you're going to describe the experience of being alive as fine? What a flimsy and feeble word. If you're crappy, say you're crappy. If you're amazing, say you're amazing. Tell the truth. And this not only goes for the social construct, oh, I don't want to burden you with the fact that I hate my life, or, you know, hey, I'm amazing, but that would make you feel terrible. <laughs> the bigger issue... The bigger issue with fine is that you say it to yourself. That thing that you want, I guarantee you, you've convinced yourself that you're fine not having it. That's why you're not pushing yourself. It's the areas in your life where you've given up, where you've said, oh, I'm fine. I, I, my mom's never going to change, so I just can't have that conversation. I'm fine. You know, we've got to wait until the kids graduate before we get divorced, so we'll just sleep in separate bedrooms. I'm fine. I lost my job. I can barely pay my bills, but whatever. It's hard to get a job. And, you know, one of the reasons why this word also just annoys me so much is scientists have calculated. Oh, yeah, I'm coming down. <laughs> scientists have calculated the odds of you being born. That's right. They've crunched the numbers. I see you up there. <laughs> They've crunched the numbers on you. Yeah, no, you guys standing up, you want to sit down for this. <laughs> They've crunched the numbers on you being born. And they took into account all of the wars and the natural disasters and the dinosaurs and everything else. And do you realize that the odds, the odds of you, yeah, right here, put your computer away, stand up for me. Doug. <laughs> so the odds of Doug here, turn around, say hi to everybody. The odds, oh. yeah, of Doug, Doug being born at the moment in time he was born to the parents you were born to with the DNA structure that you have, a hundred, or no, one and four hundred trillion. Isn't that amazing? I'm so lucky. Yes. <laughs> You're not fine. You're fantastic. You have life-changing ideas for a reason, and it's not to torture yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And you know, Christine was right when she said all of you could be on stage, because all of you, we're all in this category. One and four hundred trillion. All day long, you have ideas that could change your life, that could change the world, that could change the way that you feel. And what do you do with them? Nothing. All right, guys, I hope you found some value in this video today. Mel Robbins is definitely a very inspirational, and motivational character that we can learn a lot from and be motivated by. So as you move forward in your week, reflect on these lessons. Um, it'll definitely help grow you um, both personally and financially. All right, guys, if you could, please go ahead and smash that like button for me. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Leave a comment down below. If you guys have already been following Mel Robbins, 
Um, what have you loved about her so far? And if you haven't, what is your favorite uh, lesson that you learned from today's video? I'd love to go ahead and connect with you guys. And as always, keep grinding, y'all.